Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be taking a look at flashing a custom ROM on our Pixel 3 and today's custom ROM is Lineage OS 17.0, the unofficial build of pretty much Android 10 but lineaged. Uh, so we'll be taking a look and installing that on our Pixel 3. Now this ROM is also compatible with the Pixel 3 XL as well and it also includes both the download links here. So I'll be installing this on our Pixel 3 which is also known as the Blue Line or just Blue Line. And here are some important notes that we'll read right now. So number one, that your data will be wiped when you flash this. Uh, since there's no TWRP for Android Q, we'll be using a modified boot image that allows us to flash the ROM in the stock recovery. This is also provided here. And uh, this will also include Google Apps, so you don't need to flash your own. And also the vendor radio and bootloader images are included inside the zip files, which is great. And also, there are some features that haven't been ported over from version 16. And if you want to root your phone, which we'll also do in this video, we'll need to patch the boot image to do so. And pretty much that's it. So uh, what I have here is also the instructions, which we'll briefly have a look at. So I'm currently already on Android Q, and I'm sure most of you are as well. So what we're going to do is flash the boot image, and then go and do a factory reset, and then sideload the ROM file, which is simple enough. So here are the downloads that we need. So here are the two download links that we need pretty much, the ROM and the boot image, and also the one for the 3XL. So download the one that's right for your device. Uh, either link will take you to uh, the Android file host website where you can download the ROM. You can also download the boot image here, which is good. And another thing you'll need, of course, is the SDK platform tools. Make sure you have the latest one. Right now, the latest one is version 29.0.5 released on October 2019. So download the one for your operating system, click on that, agree with the terms and conditions, and click on the blue download link. I've already downloaded this, so no problems there. And I'll also ask you to download the factory image for your device, just in case things go wrong or we might need to flash it. Uh, it's always good to have this handy. So I have all the files that we need here. So that's the platform tools. That's the ROM, that's the modified boot image that I got from the XDA thread, and this is the factory image for the December security update. Uh, so as I mentioned the factory images, it's also good to read the last few pages of the XDA thread. People generally have questions here, and they're usually answered. Uh, for example, this one's talking about uh, you know no signal, no cell service. And uh, so I recommend that you actually have a look at some of these just to get an idea or feel about how the ROM is currently going and if there are any additional things that you might need to uh, do. So that's cool. Let's go back to the first page so I can read off the instructions as well, but it should be quite easy. So why don't we begin by opening up the platform tools. So let's open that up. And if you already have these extracted somewhere and you've used them before and they are recent, you can go ahead and use those old ones that you have already used before. Uh, but if not, just drag and extract the platform tools folder from the zip file outside into the Android folder, just where everything else is. Doesn't really matter where, just as long as you know where it is. And that's all we need to do there. And let's open up the platform tools folder. And we need to open up a command prompt window or a terminal or PowerShell window here. I'm going to open up a command prompt window. So you can go into the address bar here of the platform tools folder and type in CMD and hit enter. And that'll change or open up a command prompt window that opens up to the platform tools folder. So you can actually run the files that are in here and programs. So we need to usually use the fastboot and ADB executables. So if we type in fastboot this time, we'll be able to use it. And if we type in ADB, we'll be able to use that as well. So keep that handy. I will we'll move over to my uh, to console emulator. It allows me to zoom in and all, all that cool stuff. So, and once you've done that, let's go back to the Android folder. So go back one folder to where everything else is, just so we can have those easily accessed. And over here, what we can do is pretty much get our phone into the bootloader. Now I did almost forget to mention that an unlocked bootloader is required, but I'm sure you have that by now. If not, you can have a look at this video here. I'll leave a link to it into the description as well, and that will get your bootloader unlocked. And then you can come back and follow this video. But right now, we need to go to our device here, and we need to reboot our phone into the bootloader. So I'm going to tap on restart and I'm going to hold the volume down button until we get into the bootloader. There we go. And once your phone is in the bootloader, let's head over back to our computer here. And this is where we will 
uh, type in fast food devices just like this sorry I left out an S there and what you should see is your serial number and your device connected as fast food if not you might need to wait a little bit for Windows update to install drivers automatically or you will need to install those yourself as well I will leave a link to a video down below to cover that but once your device is connected and detected let's go ahead and flash this boot image so let's type in fast boot flash boot leave a space after the word boot and drag in the boot image if you can't drag in the file like that you can hold shift and right click on the image or file that you need and then you'll see an option to copy as path so once you click on that you can right click on the command prompt after leaving the space here and that'll paste in the location of this image to use so you can also do that if you can't drag and drop so I'm going to hit enter and that's going to flash the boot image to our phone and once we've done that let's head over to the recovery and to do that we need to go down here and change the option to recovery mode and then press the power button to select it and we'll wait for our phone to boot into the recovery okay now we're in the recovery mode now we need to first up do a factory reset so let's do that so it's wipe data slash factory reset uh, select that option you can use the volume buttons to navigate I'll just try to zoom in here a little bit hopefully that's not too blurry uh, anyway so let's select power and select factory data reset and you'll see at the bottom it'll start to do some stuff here like wipe data and the security chip that's inside of our phone okay the data wipe is complete and what we can do next is select the option apply update from ADB press the power button and that'll say ADB sideload there and what we can do here is actually go to our computer again and this is where we will uh, actually do our ROM installation so we need to go back to our command prompt and type in ADB sideload leave a space after sideload and drag in the lineage OS or zip file the ROM zip file and hit enter and that'll start sideloading and uploading the file to our phone which is going to be pretty cool you can see the percentage rise and you can also see sorry down here that it is verifying the update package so it is installing which is good give this a few moments uh, this might take a little while but not too long and we should see our well ROM flash to our phone so give this a second okay so the flashing has finished so let's restart our phone or let our phone reboot here so you select power because that's already selected I'll just make it bigger and um, so let's reboot this system and we'll see where this goes and where it takes us all right that's a good sign seeing the lineage boot animation all right and we're booted up and that took very little time and we can skip this of course I think doing one of these bad boys that's right we can skip the installation wizard I love that trick anyways here it is everything is looking pretty good let's just turn down the brightness so we can see what's going on and let's see what Google Apps we have here we've got the Play Store and the Google App and I think that's all we really need actually so here it is um, things look like they're working quite well I don't think there is the squeeze or active edge function here not at all so you can forget about that I know some people who like that I really like that as well uh, let's see here are the gestures that you can have so you can choose the gesture navigation as well which is cool and this is pretty much lineage OS so that's the usual trust thing that they had before and uh, here we are so this is an unofficial build there will be more things coming out later hopefully this will also reach an official stage which would be awesome can uh, do all sorts of things and everything looks like it just works the way it does uh, including you know having the Play Store and uh, some minimal Google Apps so this is actually pretty neat and that is how you install it so if that's all you need to do then that is it for this video but if you want to root your phone here is how we are going to do that so why don't we connect our phone to Wi-Fi here okay so what we're going to do here is download the latest version of Magisk Manager so I'm just on the XDA thread here and we'll download the latest version of the Magisk Manager and we'll download that to our phone it's got a weird file name but we can sort that out later alternatively you can enable USB debugging which I'll probably do now 
um, so we can uh, just do things a little bit easierly. So I'm going to go to about phone, tap on the build number seven times, enable the developer options, which are in here. And then I'm going to also enable advanced restart. That's nice to have. And I'm going to scroll down here to enable USB debugging. And we might also have to allow USB debugging, which is good. I'm going to check always allow from this computer as well, just to make things easier. And our download is complete. And I guess we can also allow from the source and tap on install and recognize that it was an APK. That's also good. I'm just going to turn up the brightness again. And we've got that installed, which is good. Okay, that's fine. A lot of app updates now. So we've got Magisk Manager, but what we also need is that boot image that we downloaded earlier from the XDA thread from the ROM. So if I'm just switch back to our computer here, uh, if you remember, we downloaded the boot.image that was modified. We can pretty much use this to patch uh, or allow Magisk Manager to install Magisk onto, and we can root our phone this way. So why don't we use ADB to push this image to our SD card? So we can type in ADB push, and then drag in the boot image, or you know, do the shift and right click, copy as path, and then type in forward slash SD card forward slash, and I'll copy that file to the SD card. Uh, alternatively, you can enable file transfer mode and copy that over. But uh, you know, this is fun. This is cool doing this way. So let's open up Magisk Manager, and you can say see that Magisk is not installed. We'll tap on install, tap on install again, and we're going to select and patch a file grant it uh, the access to our internal storage. We're going to press, oh, okay, so it's already enabled. We can go to the internal storage right here. If not, you need to tap on the three dots and allow or show internal storage here. But we can see the boot images here, so let's tap on that and let Magisk download itself. And then we'll be able to uh, let that install Magisk. So we'll just give this a few seconds to download. Okay, the boot image is patched and we are going to copy the image from our phone onto our computer using ADB as well. So why don't we go back to our computer here and we'll do this. So we'll type in ADB pull to get something from the phone and we'll type in the location that Magisk Manager has given us and a shortcut to storage emulated zero would just be SD card. So we can type in forward slash SD card forward slash type in download with a capital D and then forward slash magisk underscore patched oops, dot img. And then we can put in two dots. Now the two dots here represents the parent directory. And you can see that the parent directory here is Android because we are currently in the platform tools directory. So hit enter and that will copy the patched image to our folder where everything else is, the Android folder. And what we can do here is reboot our phone into the bootloader. We can type in adb command, but I reckon we can just hold this power button tap on restart, and if you enabled advanced reboot options like I just did when enabling USB debugging, you can tap on the bootloader. Otherwise, you just tap on restart and hold the volume down button until you get into the bootloader. And once you're in the bootloader, what you can do is type in fast boot flash boot, leave a space after the word boot, and drag in or copy the path of the Magisk patched image and hit enter. And that should allow you to boot up rooted using Magisk. So let's type in, well, actually, let's just press start on our phone here. And hopefully our phone should boot up. And there we are, so that's good. Let's unlock this. Let's open up Magisk. And ta-da, we are rooted using Magisk. We are up to date. And we are running Android Q, or pretty much Lineage, Lineage OS 17. Man, that word is hard to say fast. Anyways, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. And if you have any other questions, feel free to leave it down below. But even better yet, join us on Discord and we can have a chat about it over there. Especially if you need help, chatting on Discord is just so much easier. So I look forward to seeing you there. And as always, happy flashing.